in today's video, a 12 inch power book, or basically an aluminum iBook. More about that in a little bit. All right, welcome all to a new video. Didn't quite make it to Marchintosh to get this Mac content published. I promise for all of the PC and retro viewers of my channel, there'll be content about that soon. Working on a couple of different projects there. And I've got some uh, finished projects that I want to show uh, at a later point. But first, let's take a look at the 12 inch PowerBook. Now, I always wanted one of these in my collection. I could never find one that was either nice enough or affordable enough. I'm not going to make any secrets about the fact that I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds on acquiring a machine like this in decent condition. Because, let's face it, this machine will not get used much. Uh, it's just here to look nice, occasionally boot up, have some fun with it, and put it back uh, into its sleeve and put it away uh, in storage. This is not something that I intend to daily. It's just something I want in my collection because I really like how it looks. I absolutely love the Apple aluminum design from this era. It's also one of the reasons why I'm one of those few idiots on the, on the planet that prefers the older aluminum design to the later unibody designs that Apple did on the MacBook Pros. In fact, just hold on one bit. There's also a video subject coming soon about one of these. It's only slightly, slightly bigger, right? But yeah, this is a 17 inch pre unibody MacBook Pro. Let's put that away. That's also one of my recent acquisitions. I actually got that before this one, but I want to take a look at this one first. Now, in the beginning of the video, I said uh, this is the aluminum iBook. Now, for a comparison, because we all know that I have iBooks galore, here is a 12 inch iBook. Just take a look at the surface here, we can see that the iBook is a little bit thicker. Of course, it is made from plastic. This is a design cue that they kept going until the uh, discontinuation of the original MacBook line, which was uh, mid-2010 was the latest version that was still plastic. And then they uh, let that series die for another five years, and then they came out with a 12-inch MacBook. Again, going back to the 12-inch form factor. Uh, nice trivia there. Um, but uh, yeah, back in the PowerPC days, there was also a difference between the home-oriented machines, the iBook, and the business-grade machines, the PowerBook, later MacBook Pro, MacBook. A little bit more uh, easier to differentiate in terms of name. But they have the same overall design aesthetic, rounded corners, uh, nice edges here, they're all smooth. Both of these, machi these machines have a uh, latch button in front, and a battery in uh, the same location. If we take a look at the right hand side of both machines, we can see a little difference there. Here we have the optical drive and just the optical drive. On the iBook we have the optical drive and the power output. On the uh, power book it is switched to the other side, which we will see next. There's nothing to see on the back, so we're going to skip that side uh, for now. Here we can see the I.O. on both machines. We have the power plug here, as I just alluded to earlier. Modem, same on the iBook. Ethernet, same as on the iBook. On other PowerBook models, this is Gigabit Ethernet, uh, starting from the Titanium PowerBooks already, but the 12 inch was cut down to just 100 megabit fast Ethernet, which is a shame. Uh, Firewire 400 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, Mini DVI on the PowerBook, Mini VGA on the iBook, because VGA was more prevalent at the time for the home user, for their home displays, and projectors as well in the schools, but uh, DVI was more of a business grade digital connection. We also have a line in, which we do not have on the iBook. Because the lock on the PowerBook is here, on the iBook it is over here. Right. So that's not where all of the similarities with the iBook end. They both have the same 12 inch display, they have more or less the same battery life. They use the same optical drives, the same basic CPU, just that the PowerBook was always positioned a bit higher. So they gave it uh, a little higher bus speed, which uh, clocked the CPU up, because they all used the same multipliers in the end. And that was about it. 
here we get a nice view of the machine. So yeah, we get a nice metal edge around the, around the display. It's a 12-inch display, 1024 by 768. We get our familiar PowerBook and pre-unibody MacBook Pro uh, keyboard. I really like these keyboards. They feel very nice to type on. It is not backlit on the PowerBook 12-inch. Again, one of those cost-cutting measures. This was really the baby PowerBook in that regard. And uh, yeah, also flash up uh, on the screen what these machines actually cost because I can't remember from the top of my head, but you can see the price difference there, which uh, may or may not have been worth it to the average home consumer. Internally, again, they, they have IDE hard drives. They, uh, both the iBook and the PowerBook at this period have uh, wireless and Bluetooth. On the iBook, they were optional until the late 2004, then they were included standard. On the PowerBook, the 2004, which this one is, uh, already has both of them as standard. The iBook has a Radio 9200 mobility with 64, uh, uh, 32 megabytes rather uh, of memory. This has a GeForce FX 5200 Go with 64 megabytes, so slightly more powerful CPU or GPU. Uh, CPUs are the same more or less. This one has slightly higher bus speed, which clocks it up to uh, 1.33 gigahertz. And the iBook of the same period was a 1.2 gigahertz. So, slight bump there. But yeah, for the past uh, five minutes, I've just been ranting about the fact that the PowerBook 12 is basically just an iBook. So why not just get an iBook? I guess that's what most people did, because these are not quite as common as the iBook G4 was. It's, there's definitely a big difference there in terms of overall availability. As you may also have noticed, I've completely booted it up on battery power. This machine still has a functioning battery. The things I did to this machine in particular uh, are, are the following things. This was already maxed out in terms of RAM by the previous owner. I decided to uh, swap the hard drive. It had a 40 gigabyte Western Digital in it, which was not original. Uh, I replaced it with an SSD. That is, I think, uh, I should be able to find that out. 128 gig. Why did I type find? I want to type disk utility. Uh, which is on the leopard partition, which we're on right now. Yep. 120 gig. It's in one of those M2 uh, or M.2 to SATA uh, and then IDE adapters. So, you know, you can buy this for about 10 bucks from Amazon and just get a cheapo SSD, the cheapest one you can find in the right capacity. 120 gigs is pretty much decent enough for this. Still says it has three hours of runtime left. I did not uh, replace the battery in this. This is, uh, I think, the original battery still, which is very nice. And um, yeah, again, as I said, the memory was already maxed out at 1.25 gigs. I'll give it a, a zoom action there so we can just see the screen a bit better from this point forward. There we go. If Mac OS 10, 10 5.9, this is Sorbet Leopard. I think this is the latest release of Sorbet Leopard. You can download that from the Macintosh Garden. It's an optimized version of Leopard for PowerPC Max. And as you can tell, it uh, runs pretty well. 1.33 gigahertz. This has the 167 megahertz frontside bus. The iBook of this equivalent period would have a uh, probably 143 megahertz or something like that just to get the clock speed down a little bit. We have no serial ATA, we do have ATA. We have our broken optical drive. I do have a replacement, but it's, yeah, I need to get myself together for that because it's a motherboard out job to get it replaced, which is very annoying. It's actually harder to do than a hard drive replacement on an iBook, which is more or less one of the hardest things you'll ever do in terms of computer repair, but eh, oh well. Then we have our Intenso 120 gigabyte SSD which I bought for about 20 bucks, I think. The FX 5200 Go by NVIDIA. It does support Quartz Extreme and has hardware accelerated core image, but it will not display the translucent menu bar, which you might have noticed. That's something that's very specific to the FX 5200 series. I don't know the exact details of it, but uh, I guess it it's a bit glitchy or something, so Apple decided to just disable it. You get, get the same thing on a uh, Power Mac G5 with the same graphics card. That one shipped with the FX5200 Ultra, if I'm not mistaken. And that also will not show a translucent menu bar. 
while if you have a later model or an ATI graphics card in the 9000 series, which uh, starts with the 9500 series for core image acceleration, uh, you do get the translucent menu bar. My 14-inch iBook from 2005, for instance, does actually support it. So, optimized, I said. Sorbet Leopard, which I'll not get into too much. Here is Office 2008. As you can see, it started up in just a matter of seconds. It is one of those notorious applications that always runs like crap on a PowerPC Mac, in my opinion. It always takes a long time to start up. Now it just takes a long time to close, but that's just what Office 2008 is like. Uh, we have the latest iTunes. Of course, we have some amenities like Time Machine, so we can make backups of the machines. We have the Sorbet App Store, as well as the PowerPC App Store, which I installed. And Interweb PPC G4 for a better web browsing experience, now that 10.4 Foxy is dead. So that makes these machines still uh, somewhat useful for basic tasks. In fact, I have some plans for this machine. I said early in the video that I was uh, just saying that this will probably end up going back into the storage. But I'm still deciding on a couple things. For the future of this channel, I actually want to start writing scripts for my videos. I actually really enjoy doing these off-the-cuff videos, but just talk to the camera. But I also want to do some more uh, scripted stuff. Some more in-depth videos are on, on some subjects. And I do want something that I can comfortably type on and just do some uh, word processing. And I think a laptop like this is absolutely perfect for that, because I don't need much. I just need to type, on, I type, up, type out some text. My god, my tongue is not working today. Uh, and go for it with that. And, you know, the fact that this is mobile, it's easy to carry around, it's not terribly heavy, it makes it a very good candidate. But I'm sort of debating between this, um, my 15-inch PowerBook and my 17-inch MacBook Pro, and I want one of these machines to have a dedicated purpose for the future, but I'm still deciding on that. But that's just something for the future. Right, so I guess this is all uh, the time I really want to steal from all of you uh, regarding this little machine here. We're going to shut it down now and finish the video here. I hope you enjoyed this video on the 12-inch PowerBook G4. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.